Hey everybody, welcome to my video where I compare Apple Watch Series 5 to the Series 3 and tell you all about the benefits each one has to offer to help you make the best buying decision. So stay tuned! With the holidays just around the corner, I've had so many friends asking me about the Apple Watch. They want to know what the difference is between the Series 3 and Series 5, to see if the extra money for the Series 5 is worth it, and to see which one they'll get the most out of. So I thought I'd make this little comparison video to help people make an informed buying decision. First off, if you're looking at buying your first Apple Watch, you really can't make a bad choice, as they would both benefit anyone with an iPhone. The Apple Watch is basically like a remote or extension of your iPhone. You can use it to find your iPhone by pinging your iPhone from your Apple Watch control center. You can also use it to remotely control music playback, which is really helpful if you have AirPods or any wireless headphones. And of course, it's also an activity or fitness tracker as well, reporting your daily calories burned, steps, exercise time, and more. They both also have great features like notifications on your wrist so you don't have to take your phone out of your pocket, Apple Pay, and an app store that extends the capabilities further like checking your bank account balance or the weather. The Series 5 does offer some additional capabilities that the Series 3 doesn't offer. The Series 5 offers a new always-on display, which is really cool and makes it more like a normal watch, as all the previous series keep the display off until you're looking at it to save battery power. In the Series 5, they've also added a compass, so if you're navigating a map using your Apple Watch, you can now see which direction you're going in, just like on your iPhone. It also has a new ECG feature that was added on Series 4 that can help you gain insight into heart irregularities. Plus it also offers a new noise app that lets you use your Apple Watch as a decibel meter to determine how loud your surroundings are. It's pretty cool. The Series 5 is also slightly larger and offers more case options. The screen sizes on the Series 5 are 44mm and 40mm, as where the Series 3 is a bit smaller at 42mm and 38mm. The Series 3 also has fewer case options as Apple only offers it in an aluminum case, where the Series 5 is not only available in aluminum but also stainless steel, titanium, and ceramic. Personally, I don't think that's much of a big deal as I like the aluminum one anyway. I found it to be the most durable and less prone to scratching if you're an active person like myself. The Series 5 also has a newer Bluetooth 5 versus the Series 3 with Bluetooth 4.2, so it will connect faster to AirPods or other wireless audio devices. Also, the digital crown on the Series 5 has haptic feedback, so it feels like it's clicking through gears, which provides a more tactile feeling to scrolling through menus. But the Series 3 still offers lots of benefits, such as water resistance, so you can go swimming with it, a display that's just as bright that goes up to 1000 nits, and all the basic Apple Watch capabilities I discussed earlier. Whether these additional features are worth the price is up to you, as the starting price for the Series 5 is almost double that of the Series 3. The starting price for the Series 3 is at $199 US, as where the starting price for the Series 5 is $399 US. The Apple Watch is a great device. It can be really handy once you're used to it, but it's not mission critical. My overall advice when buying an Apple Watch is to buy what you can afford. If you can stretch your budget to make the Series 5 work, then I personally do think it's worth it with all the extra features. But if the budget isn't quite there, or you're not sure if it's something you're going to get much use out of, then the Series 3 is still a great option if it's your first Apple Watch. If you currently own an Apple Watch, like the original, or up to a Series 2, then I'd recommend springing for the Series 5. You'll definitely notice a difference. And on the upside, any watch bands you bought for your current watch will be compatible with the new one as long as you choose the same size category. Apple watch bands made for the 38mm watch are compatible with the 40mm, and the bands for the 42mm are compatible with the 44mm Apple watch. Also, if you already own an Apple Watch and are looking at upgrading, you can trade in your existing Apple Watch at the Apple Store. The value isn't too high on the trade-ins, but at least you get something for it if you're not planning on giving it to a friend or family member. It certainly beats sitting on a shelf collecting dust. Like I said, no matter what Apple Watch you choose, you really can't make a bad choice. They're pretty handy once you start getting used to them. If you'd like to learn how to make the most of your Apple Watch, click on the i card above and check out my video, Make the Most of Your Apple Watch. I'll leave a link in the description below. Do you own an Apple Watch? Which one did you choose and why? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And while you're down there, don't forget to ring that bell and subscribe to the channel for more tech videos, including tech how-tos, every week. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.